Welcome to the Mobile Money Nation. My name is AJ. Thanks for taking this time out of your day to watch this video. If you're not a current subscriber, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. Hit the like button because you're really gonna like this video and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I create a video. Today, I just wanted to talk about the differences between a mutual fund, an index fund, and an ETF. I've gotten a lot of questions in the past and I know that there's a lot of confusion and sometimes the three of these items are mixed up with each other. So I just wanted to take some time to explain what the differences are as well as the similarities between these three investment vehicles. So first I wanna talk about mutual funds. Mutual funds are an investment vehicle which includes stocks, bonds, or maybe other assets as well. And these mutual funds are created by multiple investors pooling their money together to then invest in these assets. And mutual funds can be actively managed or they can be passively managed. And what that means is that you may have a manager who actively chooses what stocks or bonds are gonna be included in this mutual fund, which may involve more or less trading depending on what their strategy is for that mutual fund. And now the more passively managed funds are funds that may follow a specific set of stocks or maybe an index of funds, which we'll go into talk about later in this video. And so the main thing with mutual funds is that it gives the average investor access to professionally managed funds that they may otherwise not have access to. And typically where you'll see this access is through 401k accounts, 403bs, 457s, or other similar retirement plans. Now mutual funds are not traded throughout the day. They're all bought and sold at the end of the trading day. So that means no matter what happens in the middle of the day during the 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. trading period that you would typically hear about, these funds are only bought and sold after the trading day ends at 4 p.m. Eastern. So examples of popular mutual funds that you may hear about, especially from Vanguard, are VTSAX, which is the Vanguard Total Stock Market Mutual Fund, and VFINX, which is the Vanguard's version of the S&P 500. Now these are mutual funds, which are also index funds. So right now I'll go into talking about what an index fund actually is. Now an index fund is a portfolio of stocks or bonds, which is created to match or closely track an index. And the first index fund to ever be created was created by John Bogle. Now the indexes that you would normally hear about are Standard & Poor's version of the S&P 500 or the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Now the S&P 500 is a portfolio of 500 stocks, typically what you think of as the quote unquote top 500 companies in the US. And then the Dow Jones Industrial Average is a portfolio of 30 stocks. Now the reason I say quote unquote with the top 500 stocks is because that Apple, which used to be part of the S&P 500, is now part of the Dow Jones 30. So while Apple is considered one of the top stocks in the US, because Standard & Poor's creates both the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones 30, any of the stocks that are in the Dow Jones 30 are not in the S&P 500. Now these are just the two most popular index funds. There are also other indexes that track small cap stocks and mid cap stocks. But the main point with indexes is that they don't change very often. And this is why index funds are considered passively managed funds. And index funds can come in the form of a mutual fund or as an ETF. And this is why there's a lot of confusion because an index fund doesn't have to be a mutual fund and it doesn't have to be an ETF, but it is one of the above. So if you think about the old saying back from elementary school where a square and a rectangle and a polygon, all squares are rectangles, all squares are polygons, but not all rectangles are squares but all rectangles are polygons. So it's similar to that where there is a little overlap and there are many things that are very similar between the three. Now index funds can come in the form of a mutual fund or an ETF. And so an example of an index fund that is a mutual fund, like I mentioned earlier, is VTSAX. And that's the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund, the mutual fund version. But the ETF version of the Total Stock Market Index Fund would be VTI. And the same goes for the S&P 500. For the mutual fund version of the S&P 500 index fund, you have VFINX. But for the ETF version of the index fund for the S&P 500, it is the ticker symbol VOO. And there are many other companies that have these index funds, whether it's a mutual or an ETF, and it could be made by Vanguard or Fidelity, Charles Schwab, many of the big financial companies out there all have their own version of a mutual fund or of an ETF. 
So next we'll get into what an ETF is. Now the meaning of an ETF is an exchange traded fund. And so what that means is that these funds are traded on an exchange. So very similar to a mutual fund, an ETF is just a holding of a group of stocks or bonds, which is all included in one fund. But the main difference, as I mentioned, is that an ETF is traded on an exchange. So this means that you can buy and sell that ETF throughout the trading day from 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Now, because you don't have to wait to the end of the day to buy your exchange traded fund like you would with a mutual fund, this can be a good or a bad thing. This means that you can take advantage of any big drops or any big gains in the market by either buying or selling the ETF that you own. But this also means that you could make some unnecessary trades just because you're trying to keep up with whatever's going on in the news for that day. So for instance, during this coronavirus craze, there are a lot of people that may have been buying or selling in and out of the market. Whereas if you own a mutual fund, you would only be able to do it at the end of the day. So that may stop you from making any rash decisions just based on what news is going on in the market during the middle of the day. Now, another big difference between the mutual fund and the ETF is that there is no minimum in order to get into the fund. So for example, with the VTSAX mutual fund, which is also an index fund, it requires a $3,000 minimum just to get started with that fund. But if you were to buy the exchange traded fund version of the total stock market index, which is VTI, all you have to do is buy just one share, or if you use a platform that allows fractional share purchases, then you can just buy a piece of that exchange traded fund, which is also an index fund. Now, additional note, as far as the differences between an ETF and a mutual fund, ETFs are more passively managed because they stick to whatever the index or whatever the sector that they follow. And I did forget to mention that there are specific ETFs that may follow a sector. So if you wanted to invest in all oil companies, there's an ETF that follows just the oil sector. If you wanted to invest in just IT companies, there's an ETF that follows only IT companies. And so for every sector, there's an ETF that follows it. Or so you don't have a fund manager who's deciding every day what they're gonna buy into and sell into. It's all based on what's available publicly in the market, whether a company is going bankrupt or whether there's a new IPO, and then there may be companies added to those specific sector ETFs or to the specific index fund ETFs. So as I define these three financial definitions that you'll hear about a lot in the media, You'll hear about it a lot from your friends and family. Those are the main differences between a mutual fund, an index fund, and an ETF. Now, while a mutual fund cannot be an ETF, an index fund, however, can be either a mutual fund or an ETF. All right, so I hope this video has removed some of the confusion between the differences and the similarities of mutual funds, index funds, and ETFs. If you have any questions or if you have anything additional to add as far as the differences and the similarities, make sure you leave a comment down below. If you have any preferences in what you like to invest in, whether it's a mutual fund, an ETF, or an index fund that could be either one, or if you prefer investing in sector ETFs or more actively managed mutual funds, let us know what you think in the comments below. All right, thanks for taking this time out of your day to watch this video. I really appreciate that. If you're not a current member of the Mobile Money Nation, all you have to do is hit the subscribe button down below, hit the like button because you really like this video, and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I create a video. Again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.